As soon as I saw the ancient weapons from Zelda Breath of the Wild, I knew I had to have some of those. And I looked around online and there really isn't much that you can download, so I decided to make my own. This arrow is modeled completely in Fusion 360. I started with a picture that I was able to find online and just started sketching it out from there. And then 3D printed the parts on a Form 2 printer, and now I'm going to show you how to put it together. The model I'm assembling in this video had 18 pieces, each with its own iterations and prototypes, but the version that I've uploaded online is actually a simplified version just to make printing and assembly both a little bit easier. There are eight pieces that you'll need to print in clear, but the other ones you can print in any color you want because we'll be painting them. My original thought was that keeping them separate would make it easier to paint, but it required a lot of sanding and I even did something in the wrong order and had to make a slight alteration. You should start by priming your models with a matte spray paint, starting with light coats and then heavy coats afterwards. Try to avoid getting paint on any of the connecting surfaces, like here or here, because you'll have to end up sanding those parts later. Then you'll want to sand down all of the clear pieces so that the light can reflect off of the inside. I found it works best if you work with a rough grit sandpaper first, and then sand it in with something higher grit to smooth it out. You can then try to pop the inset into this top piece. Uh, some sanding might be required, but it's always better to spend more time sanding than to try to force it in and possibly break it. All the electronics are from Adafruit. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details on how I designed the circuit or how I wrote the code. If you're interested in those kinds of things, let me know in the comments below and maybe I can explore it in a future video. For now, you can download my code and upload it to your Arduino and just use what I've already developed. These are all the parts from Adafruit that you'll need to complete this project. I'll have a full parts list with links in the description. People often ask why I use an Arduino instead of just regular LEDs for projects like this. And the reason for that is not only that you can do cool animations, but you can also perfectly color match the lights from the game. For the single NeoPixels and the NeoPixel jewels, you'll want two wires soldered to both of the data pins on the Arduino. For the NeoPixel strip, you only need one. You'll also need power and ground for everything in the system. I'll have a full circuit diagram linked in the description as well. Because it's such a tight fit in this prop, you'll want to constantly check that all the LEDs are working and that you don't have any shorts. If you need to, you can electrically insulate the wires with hot glue, and it'll also help keep things in place. Don't forget to add a switch to your battery to make it easy to turn on and off. The top two pieces slide right onto the crystal. Remember how I said you might have to do some sanding if you get paint on these parts? Well, I had to do a lot of sanding. To paint the prop, I'm using model color acrylics, and I started with a base coat of just brown. I think it's pretty close to the arrow in the game. For the highlights, I'm using a mixture of yellow and brown. It's about three parts yellow to one part brown. I then added a little bit of weathering and character to the prop using a technique called dry brushing. Dry brushing is when you have barely any paint on your paintbrush and you just dab it into detailed spots. I did a dry brush of brown and then a small amount of black. I made the feathers on the back of the arrow out of EVA foam. I traced out a pattern of roughly what I wanted and then made three of them. To get rid of the patterning on the back of the EVA foam, I just lightly hit it with some sandpaper. EVA foam cuts really easily with a razor blade or box cutter, so to get the patterning on the feathers that I wanted, I just cut V's into the foam. You can then add as much weathering and detail as you'd like. In order to paint EVA foam, you first have to coat it with Plasti Dip, otherwise the paint will soak right into the foam. I first started with a coat of white on the feathers and then came back with a coat of red. This doesn't have to be perfect because feathers aren't perfect. Remember, we don't make mistakes, we just have happy accidents. The original amount for the feathers was a little hard to work with, so I made my spikes shorter and made the spikes on the model for download shorter as well. I 
I'm using a dowel rod for the shaft of the arrow. I measured out what was a good length for me and cut it to length, but you can make this as long or as short as you'd like. I then weathered the dowel rod a little bit and glued it to the feathers. I used a little bit of hot glue to hold the dowel rod in place, but I probably didn't need it. You can at this point add screws to the arrow. I would recommend doing this if you're going to take this out cosplaying, but mine didn't exactly need it. You can then take some leather cord and wrap it around the arrow, and then tie it in place. This is what it looks like all put together. It does look pretty big already, but if I could make one recommendation, if you're going to put this project together, I would try scaling everything up a little bit. It's gonna make assembly a lot easier and wire management definitely easier. Even though this project was pretty difficult to get all the electronics on the inside, I am really happy with how it turned out. If you like the video and you like the project, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments below. If you ever do build one of my projects, please let me know. I love hearing about that stuff. You can either let me know on YouTube or hit me up on Twitter. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.